That animal can nearly talk, he said, and would talk if he stayed here much longer. He gave me a look as plain as Mr. Pippin could speak it. If you don't let me go with you, Sam, I'll follow on my own. So Bill was going as the beast of burden, yet he was the only member of the company that did not seem depressed. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle Earth. Today I come to you all with what is perhaps the most important and most vital to Tolkien's legendarium video that I have ever attempted. Today, we discuss the legendary history of Bill, the pony from Bree. Now his history is vast, and dwarfs even the most incredible of deeds of the elves of the First Age, but I'll try to summarize it all here today. Please check out the related articles and videos concerning our adventure here today, listed in the description and cards. My friends, thank you all for joining me today. Let's begin our tale on Bill the Pony. The legend, and legacy even, of the unsung hero Bill the Pony begins sometime during the late Third Age, when he was born. Now, he was likely born in Bree, and would come to be owned by the nefarious and terrible Bill Fernie, a brigand of that town. Poor Bill, the pony, was mistreated and half-starved by that man, and likely did not even have a name by September 30th of 3018 of the Third Age. Indeed, any who would mistreat an animal like Bill Fernie are truly evil. But the fortunes of the pony would change, for four hobbits out of the Shire joined a ranger of the North, and Barlam and Butterbur, the owner of the prancing pony, which was an inn, bought the pony with a company of hobbits and man to make up for their animals they had lost in the night. Bill was sold for twelve silver pennies, which in the book was said to be three times his worth, but for a treasure such as Bill, I might wager the Silmarils themselves. The pony would go on carrying the baggage of Frodo, Sam, Mary, Pippin, and Strider, or at least as much as they had the heart to put on the beast, and eventually the pony would be named Bill by his greatest new friend among the hobbits, Samwise Gamgee. Upon leaving Bree, Bill Fernie taunted the group, Sam in particular, telling him to treat his pony right, and Sam would insult him back and throw an apple at the evil man's nose. Surely, Bill the Pony approved, for Bill the Pony was now free of his tormentor, although his score with Bill Fernie was not yet settled. Along the road towards Weathertop and then Rivendell, Bill the Pony would gain in strength, reminding me of the strength of Tolkas himself, for even life on the road was better than life with Bill Fernie. Now, after Frodo was stabbed by the Witch King on Weathertop, and the hobbit who carried the fate of the world on a chain was deeply wounded, Bill would for a time carry Frodo on his back, thus earning the pony a name amongst the most valiant heroes of the world. For without him, who knows if Frodo would have made it to Rivendell, with time enough to be healed and survive. Beyond that, Bill developed a knack for choosing good paths with less jolts for the wounded ring-bearer. Surely, a valiant deed that deserves high praise. But indeed, Bill along with the others and his master Sam would make it to Rivendell, and it is there that Bill the Pony would rest for a few months with the great horses of the Eldar. While great matters were discussed in the Council of Elrond, and the sword of Elendil was reforged, we cannot forget our hero, for Bill grew strong, very strong, on what was provided to him by the elves and Sam. What he learned from the horses of Imladris, this storyteller does not know and none of the annals of the history of Middle-earth discuss such things. This was a wisdom only Bill would ever know. Perhaps he nearly learned to speak. Thus, it was no surprise that when the company set out, he seemed to be the only member of the company not to be depressed, and perhaps even eager for travel. Although Sam was worried for Bill, and said Bill could have stayed in Rivendell and had the best hay, the pony swished his tail, saying nothing. What a guy. He was ready. And so on December 25th of 3018, Bill was, in truth, the tenth member of the Fellowship of the Ring, setting out from Rivendell to save the world from the darkness of Sauron. It may be argued that, in the case of the Nine Walkers against the Nine Riders, he tipped the balance, and was the reason the West could see victory at all. I mean, one could argue that, right? Bill would go on with the Fellowship into the lands of Oregion to the south, attempting the pass of Karathros over the Misty Mountains, all while carrying the many supplies of his friends, even if he was mournful for such a load. But no one ever heard him complain, though. And indeed, he was happy to travel with Sam. He would help shield the hobbits from the snow of that mountain, and would help carry Gimli among the baggage back down after the pass had defeated them. Bill would go on to stand and not flee from the wolves of Regian, proving that he had as stalwart a heart as any that walked with him, though he trembled and sweated. These wolves had no idea how powerful one of the members of the Fellowship was, and I ain't talking about Gandalf. However, there came a time for hard choices, and Gandalf knew that taking the path through Moria would mean that they would have to let Bill go back on his own, much to the sadness of Sam, who had to choose Frodo and continue. 
Durin's Bane would never have to come face to face with the pony, luckily for him. But before Bill was set loose on January 13th of 3019, his burdens taken off, Gandalf put words of guard and guiding on him, and though it was a bitter parting between him and Sam, and none wanted to turn him loose, it was not the end. Bill fled the Watcher, or should I say the Watcher got lucky, and the pony went into the night, even though the wolves were in that region and surely had to watch their step. It mattered not, for Bill had the words of Gandalf upon him, and he had learned much in Rivendell, and he could go wherever he wished. He could overcome anything before him. Bill was free, and Middle-earth was his pasture. Bill had to find his courage, overcome all obstacles, and carve his own legend, as I'm sure he did in tales only known by the Valar and Eru himself. Now whether or not the title, The Return of the King, refers to Aragorn to the throne of Gondor and Arnor, or Bill the Pony to our story, it is widely debated amongst Tolkien scholars. But indeed, after his adventures, he returned to Bree, just as the hobbits and Gandalf themselves did, and Sam was reunited with his Bill on October 28th of that same year. Bill would set off with the hobbits back to the Shire, and he even played his own part in rescuing that land from the clutches of Saruman and ending the War of the Ring. On the Brandywine Bridge, where a gate had been set up by the ruffians, Bill Fernie was there, but was intimidated by the hobbits and surely by the pony, whose powers had doubled since the last time they had met. Throwing the gate keys at Mary, the villain tried to run off into the night, but not before being kicked by none other than Bill the Pony. Fernie was never heard from again after that, and after he fled. And the archetypal hero's journey of our legend was complete. For just like with the end of Morgoth, with the downfall of Sauron, Bill Fernie was defeated by a hero of the West, Bill the Pony who was complimented for his kick by Sam. After the Shire was retaken and began to heal, Bill would surely live in the great peace he deserved, and he would bear Sam to the Grey Havens to watch Frodo, Gandalf, and many other heroes sail into the West in 3021, and I dare say he deserved a spot on that ship, to go to the lands of Valinor, where he might feast on hay with Nahar himself, the steed of Arome the Hunter, and Shadowfax the steed of Gandalf. But rather Bill would stay with his master and good friend, Sam Gamgee, Middle-earth, as one of the greatest ponies of that age, for there have been none like him since. And he likely remained in the Shire for the rest of his days, living in the great peace he helped create. And so, we come to the end of our magnificent tale about Bill the Pony, Bill the Great. From the story of Bill, we see that even animals of good hearts can do extraordinary things, and we must treat them with the proper love and respect they deserve. Furthermore, they have really nice kicks if we don't. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend, so we can spread the good name of Bill the Pony to all the rest of the world. Also, happy almost April Fool's Day. Indeed, while everything except my jokes and exaggerations were loreful, I may have been very hyperbolic for that reason. I hope you all had some laughs and enjoyed, this was great fun to make, and I really love Bill the Pony and talking about him. Now the sad and unfunny part of his history is the abuse he endured under Bill Fernie, and of course, in no way, I want to make light of that. But I'm always glad when Sam becomes a far better owner for him, and he gets some justice against Bill Fernie there at the end of The Return of the King. If you liked this and learned something from it, perhaps you'd like our more extreme theory on what if Bill the Pony had taken the One Ring from last year. Let me know your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections on this video in the comments below. To further support the channel, please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for a podcast and Discord server. All of those links are in the description below. I want to shout out our Valar tier patrons, Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Mark Kralik, Blair Scout, Tobias Goldner, Ryan Ramsey, Adam Rink, Merton, John Hume, Tom Bombadil, Ridgey93, Chip Slade, Jennifer Wood, and Sam McBee. Thank you to all of our patrons, it really means a lot. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a serious epic character history on Feanor, the crafter of the Silmarils. Everyone, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends. The legend, and legacy even, of the unsung... <laughs> Reminding me of the strength of Tolkas himself, for even... <laughs> as I'm sure he did in the tales only known by the Valar and Eru himself. <laughs> Hobbits, and surely by the pony, whose powers had doubled since the last time they, they met. <laughs>